Welcome to another home-based video reference guide for the PowerSchool Student Information System. I'm John Mars, a member of the home-based professional learning team in the Digital Teaching and Learning Division here at NCDPI. Today, we'll look at the process to enroll a new student in PowerSchool as of March 2021. This includes the legal versus preferred name fields and improved logic with the integration between PowerSchool and the statewide Student Unique Identifier or UID system. As you might expect, we'll begin on the PowerSchool Start page and click Enroll New Student on the left. The very first thing we need to look for is the red NC at the top of this page. The red NC is your confirmation that the North Carolina PowerSchool programming is in place. If you do not see NC in red, you will not be able to proceed with the enrollment. Since we see the red NC on this page, we're good to proceed. The first bit of information we need to enter is the student's legal name. A legal name is defined as the student's name on the legal birth certificate or a name that has been declared the person's name by a court. We'll enter the last name, then the first name, then the middle name, and finally any suffix. In our first example, we're enrolling a new student on the first day of school. The student's name is John Thomas Sampson III, so we'll enter those values. Sampson, John, Thomas, three. Once those values are entered, we'll click the copy button to copy the legal name into the preferred name fields. The next bit of information we need to discuss then is the student's preferred name. A student's preferred name is optional, however, clicking the copy button to populate the preferred name fields is required due to PowerSchool programming for a student's preferred name to be displayed by default. If a student does not have a preferred name, the preferred name field should match the legal name fields. PSUs may enter preferred first names and middle names. In our first example, our student goes by JT, so we'll enter JT into the preferred first name field. Because our student doesn't have a real strong preference around his middle name, we'll leave that as is. Next, we'll enter the student's date of birth and sex. For the student number field, the best recommended practice is to leave this field blank at all times. The integration with the statewide student unique identifier or UID system will fill this in for us. The social security number field may be used, however, it is not recommended, required, or used by NCDPI. The best practice is to leave this field blank. If the student has a home phone number, you would enter that into the phone number field. The best practice is to enter digits only, however the field is freeform. Many PSUs also choose to enter a student's primary contact number here if they don't have a home phone number. The next field is the enrollment date. The student's enrollment date should be the first day the student will attend school. If you're pre-enrolling students before the school year begins, the enrollment date would be the first day of school. Note that students should not be pre-enrolled for the next school year prior to statewide end-of-year processing. So we'll go ahead and enter in the first day of school here, since this is a new student enrolling on the first day of school. Next, we'll enter the student's ethnicity and race information. A value must be entered for both of these questions. Next, we'll select the student's full-time equivalency. In most cases, there will only be one option in this drop-down menu, and it will be titled something like full-time, or full-time student, or maybe just FTE. Below that, you'll select the student's grade level as of their enrollment date. And next up is the entry code. So because this will be this student's first enrollment this school year, we'll use the E1 entry code. See the North Carolina School Attendance and Student Accounting Manual, or SESA Manual, which is linked in the YouTube video description for details on entry codes. Next, if your school uses tracks, you would select the track that this student is on. If your school does not use tracks, you would leave this blank. Below that, you'll select the student's LEA of residence or their county or school district of residence. For charter schools especially, you'll want to ensure that this value is accurate. 
And then next, if your school uses power school fees, you would set the fee exemption status here. The default value for schools that don't use fees is student not exempted, and most North Carolina schools are not using power school fees. Also note that you cannot legally store free and reduced lunch information in PowerSchool, so that should not be entered in this field. The next section of the screen is the family match feature. If the student you're enrolling is a sibling of a student who is already enrolled, you can use the family match feature to associate those students as siblings and automatically copy some demographic information. If you will not be using family match, you can change the radio button to enroll without linking or copying information. If you will be using Family Match, you'll want to leave it on search for family members to link to and copy information from. By default, it will search for siblings or family members by the student's last name. You can also optionally enter a sibling's name, a guardian's name, a father or mother's name, or a family ID to match. And finally, below that, is the student's home address. So you can enter the student's home address here. And you can also click the validate button to validate that this is a correct address. When you click validate, it will open a new window and it will validate that that is a valid address using Google Maps and it will also give you any alternative addresses if there is a corrected form. If you do find that you would like to accept this alternative address, you will need to manually make that update to the previous screen. So once you've gotten your information from here, you'll click cancel or close out of that window, make any updates to the home address that you wanted to make here, and finally you should be good to go. At this point, you'll want to double check everything on this screen for accuracy. And if everything looks good, click submit at the bottom to proceed with enrolling the student. The first thing the system is going to do is check for existing students statewide. So this is searching the statewide student UID system to find potential matches. If the student has been attending a North Carolina public school, they should already have a UID. In this case, we know that JT is transferring to us from Durham Public Schools. So we can see that UID has his correct date of birth, his correct sex, his name, his correct UID number. So we'll go ahead and tell the system that this is the student. If this was a new student who has never attended a North Carolina public school at any point in their lifetime, you could tell it no match, create a new UID. But in this case, we found our match, so we'll select the radio button next to our match and click Next. And confirm Next. If you elected to use the Family Match feature, the next screen will show the results of the family search. Check the Related box next to any listed current students who are related to the student you're enrolling. If you would like to copy demographic information from one of these current students, select the Copy Radio button next to the current student you'd like to copy data from. Currently, the data that is copied includes the address, mailing address, any mother fields on the Legacy Demographic page, and any father fields on the Legacy Demographics page. Our example is an only child, so the system didn't find any matches here. We could have selected Enroll without linking or copying information on the Enroll New Student screen to avoid this step completely. Once you've checked any desired boxes, click Submit to enroll the student. This student is now enrolled. If this student was transferring to you from another North Carolina public school, the next step is to transfer their records into your PowerSchool instance. On the left side, you'll scroll all the way to the bottom and go to Transfer Student Record under the Enrollment heading. On the Transfer Student Record screen, the only thing you need to do is click Continue. And once you click Continue, one of three things will happen. You'll get a green check mark telling you that the transfer has been requested. In this case, the transfer has begun processing in the background and will be notified when it's complete. The other two possibilities are either Transfer Failed no previous district record found. This means that the system couldn't find any historical data to transfer in for this student. 
if you were expecting that the system would find data that should transfer in, put in a power school ticket so that they can take a closer look. The other possible thing that could happen here is transfer failed. The student must be released from their previous PSU first. And if you receive that message, you will also see contact information for the student's previous school so that you can contact the school and request the student be released. To see if this student has transferred in, we can refresh the page and we should see a little red one next to this exclamation mark at the top right. And you can click that to see that the student transfer was successful. You can also go to transfer info on the left and this will show all of the students' historical enrollments. Um, so in this case, we can see the student's historic previous enrollment at Durham Public Schools before he came to us in Asheville. At this point, we're now ready to begin entering the student's additional information and building out their schedule. At minimum, we would recommend that you check the following pages in this order starting with contacts, entering any student contacts, new contacts, updating old contacts, or maybe associating existing contacts in your district to the student. Next, you would want to check the demographics page um, and update any out-of-date information that may be here. And be sure to get this admission status field down at the bottom. Check out the NC SESA manual for additional information on the admission status options. Next, we would recommend you check the emergency medical page. And then finally, we would recommend you check out student email and enter the student's email address on this screen. This is the student email that will show up in other systems such as NC Ed Cloud. So if the student does have an email address for your school, it is highly recommended that you populate that here. High schools may also want to review the academic screen under the NC information heading to enter things like the grade 9 entry date. Your PSU may also have additional pages that need to be updated or completed at this point, so if you're not sure what other information needs to be entered, please double check with your PowerSchool coordinator. At this point, our example student, JT, is ready for us to enter this additional information and build his schedule. However, that is beyond the scope of this video. Now that we've run through this process in detail, let's look at one more quick example. A new student just came into our office and the parent has already handed us their enrollment packet. While the principal shows the family around their new school, we can get to work getting them enrolled. We'll go back to the start page, then click Enroll New Student on the left. Since we see the red NC at the top, we know we're good to continue. We know the student's legal name is Mary Sierra Jacobs. However, Mrs. Jacobs has let us know that she only wishes to be called by her middle name. She hates her first name. We'll go ahead and enter the student's legal name, Jacobs, Mary, Sierra. Then we'll click Copy to populate the preferred name fields. Since we know the student wants to be called by her middle name, we'll update the preferred first name to be Sierra. At this point, PowerSchool would display the student's name as Sierra Sierra Jacobs. To prevent this, we'll clear out the preferred middle name field. PowerSchool will now refer to the student simply as Sierra Jacobs. We can now proceed with entering the student's date of birth and their sex. We'll leave the student number and social security number fields both blank. We could input the family's home phone number or primary phone number here. We'll input our enrollment date, which is the first day of school. We'll answer the federal ethnicity and race questions. We'll select our full-time equivalency and our grade level. We'll use the E1 entry code because this is the student's first enrollment into a North Carolina public school this school year. Again, see the NC SESA manual linked in the video description for details on entry codes. Our school doesn't use tracks, so we can skip that. We'll select our LEA of residence. We're not using power school fees, so we'll skip over that. We know that this student does not have any siblings in our school, but we're in a little bit of a hurry, so we'll just skip over the family match and leave it as is. 
And finally, we'll enter the student's address. And we'll validate that address just to be sure we entered it right. And we are good. We'll double check this screen for accuracy one more time. And everything looks good, so we can click Submit to proceed with enrolling the student. The system will now search the UID system for matches. In this case, it finds no matches. That's okay, because the family just moved here from out of state. So we know this student does not have a North Carolina UID. We'll click No Match New Enrollment. Then we'll click Next and Confirm Next. Now the system will search our PowerSchool instance for any students it thinks might be related. In this case, it does find one result based on the last name. However, in this case, this is not a sibling of this student, so we will not check the copy box or the related box. We'll just leave it alone and click Submit. And now our new student, Sierra Jacobs, is enrolled and we could proceed with entering her additional information. We don't need to transfer her student records since she is new to North Carolina, so we can jump straight into data entry and building her schedule. I hope this has been helpful. As always, please stay tuned to the NCSIS page on the NCDPI website for the latest updates. This page is linked in the YouTube video description. Also, be sure to subscribe to the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss future videos from us and other NCDPI divisions. If you still have questions after watching this video, please log a ticket with PowerSchool support or email us at home underscore base at dpi.nc.gov. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful school year. Music